Welcome to a special edition, oops, I ran into Jumbo Cactar when I went to the bathroom, caught it right before I exited the room, uh, so I could hit pause at least. Uh, so we're in the middle of doing side quests, we're, tr we're trying to just max out the party before we go and into the end of the game. Um, part of that is getting the Cactar Guardian Force, which was not originally my plan what my plan was going to be was to go to cactar island to collect cactus needles if you refine 200 cactus needles 100 at a time into 100 needles you can then turn those 100 needles into a speed junction scroll only two po only two guardian forces rather gen uh, naturally learn the speed junction and it's just helpful if all of your play all of your characters are moving at the same level in this particular case, speed is key because, again, we only have two characters that can have a speed junction because of the way the Guardian Force is situated. How's it going, bud? So, um, the way you run into Jumbo Cactar is you go to Cactar Island, which we will, you'll see where I'm at in the map when we're done with this battle, and then there'll be a cactus that pops up out of the ground in random locations all over this tiny little island. Um, and if you're lucky enough to run into it, you'll run into Jumbo Cactar. Um, the biggest distinction between Jumbo Cactar and the regular Cactar is it's a lot easier to hit Jumbo Cactar. Its evasion isn't through the roof, and it has the awesome Curl Curly Q mustache. So, that's kind of where we're at right now. I'm going to slow her down a little bit, just for a minute, to get my bearings here in this particular battle. Ooh, it's got Meltdown and Tornado. All right, so Meltdown, I've talked about it a couple times, and there's only a couple of monsters in the game that have it. It's a spell that causes the status condition Vitality Zero, which Vitality Zero is does exactly what it sounds like it does. It reduces the Vitality stat, which is effectively the defense, the physical defense stat in this game to zero. Now that is one annoying thing that this guy will do, is he'll just murder you by using 10,000 needles. As opposed to a regular old cactar, which will just use a thousand needles. And I'm going to keep stocking meltdowns. And then I'm going to move on to tornadoes as well. Uh, tornado is really, really nice. Is a nice spell for uh, evasion, I, I believe. It's good for evasion and good for hit. That being said, there's no way to reduce the damage that you're going to take from Jumbo Cactar because his other attacks aren't worth defending against. So I'm just going to keep stocking Meltdowns. He really does not like Squall. Nice. That'll work. Thank you, Angelo. Actually, have to try a little tiny bit here. So you see how much damage that we're doing? It's just because it's, his defense is not is literally non-existent right now. Which is absolutely hilarious. Not that, that you get to use it against all of your opponents, but it's still incredibly useful to do when you get an opportunity to do so. Oh, and if you just stop killing me. Yeah, if you could come in on Saturday and put in 10 hours, that'd be great. 
And he's got a ton of HP. And he's constantly murdering your characters. Here we go. So remember, you cannot utilize um, Meteor Strike against most bosses. Because their HP is too high and it won't, and it simply won't register correctly. So it'll just, it'll calculate as a miss. Instead of uh, doing the damage that you're expecting it to do. Dolphin Bow is really good as well because it's water elemental and Cactar is weak to water. That and it's one of your more powerful attacks that you have anyway without going into your Burning Rave, your Meteor Beret. There we go. He won't die. Gonna keep beating him down and beating him down. He's just refusing to go down. Granted, they also won't go down in the middle of a duel. If I pull off a Renzido Kukin here. I'm gonna just laugh because it just every time it's it's hilarious to me because they had to reanimate every single Renzo Kukin for the oversized bosses like Jumbo Cactar. There we go. Boom shaka laka. Alright, so Cactar. Cactar's interesting. Got all the bonuses right out of the gate, and then it also learns initiative. It learns defend. It learns. I think it's the only guardian force that learns evasion and in luck. Eden might learn evasion, but regardless, evasion and luck junctions are really really nice. Evasion, higher it is, the less likely you're to get hit. Luck basically only affects your critical hit rate and the ability to get Odin summoned in a battle. Uh, defend is protect as a command. Kamikaze, you sacrifice yourself and you do a good chunk of damage to your enemies. Initiative does what it does. Move HP up. I've never equipped it once. Ever. We're going to learn Evasion Junction. Yeah, Luck Junction. Because if we can just get some free KOs with Odin, that's the way I want to go. But of course, we only get to enjoy that if we equip it. Alright. So, and then the other part of that was, I need to get Cactus Thorns, something fierce. I'm going to be editing the next portion of this video out because you don't want to see me fight a million cactars over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Just like the Tonberries. You don't want to see me deal with that over and over and over and over again. It's just, unfortunately, they're like the Tonberries are at least a little more interesting to view. Holy crap, that's a lot of AP. Some of these abilities quicker than I thought. 
Okay, but like I said, I'm going to be doing this for a little bit because I have to acquire 200 cactus thorns, effectively, and you can only stock 100. So, unfortunately, there's two ways, or a few ways to get a speed junction scroll. The easiest way, seemingly, is to properly, when you're in the Laguna Dream, you, you set it up properly by detonating the correct explosive in that dream, because then when you're in the Lunatic Pandora, which we'll get to here in a couple of videos, um, it's in a hole in the wall behind, hole in the wall, in the wall, in the hall below elevator 01 if set up by Laguna. So in order to get a speed scroll, you need to take, you need to have two 100 needles and an ability called Forbidden Medicine and Guardian Force Ability Medicine. Forbidden Medicine is on Doom Train, which we don't currently have yet. And then the Guardian Force Ability Medicine is on Eden, which you only get on disc four. So we're not going to be able to do that just yet. I jumped the gun a little bit there. And I'm not going to, I don't think that I have, I set it up properly for to get it on the Lunatic Pandora because in all honesty, I don't recall that ever being a thing that you could do. Um, but who am I to judge the internet? So Jumbo Cactar, we got Cactar, Gippy. Um, the next step for us is to go to the island close to heaven. And to do that, I'm just going to heal up real quick. We're going to save, because saving is important, right? Alright, and then go back to our ship. So the island close to the heaven, even though it's supposed to be the most eastern island that exists, it's actually not. Because the easternmost island that exists is this guy here, and that's not it. The island close to the heaven, I'm pretty sure is this guy. Yep, island closest to heaven. So the reason we're here is we have to deal with Malboros. Easiest and best way, in my opinion, to deal with the Malboro is to go all out to get it. What do I mean by that? Initiative mug speed junctions. Whatever you need. Rare item is also useful in this particular case. Auto haste, useful. Speed, speed, and more speed. And then anything that gives you luck. Alright. So, basically you're selling Fallout to go speed and to steal, because it's easier to steal the Malboro tentacles and run away before you just get bombarded. Because some of your characters don't have uh, status junctions. Just the nature of the game. So you, you end up getting put at a disadvantage because it's going to unleash an attack called Bad Breath, which I believe literally can inflict you with every status in the game with the exception of instant death. Chimeras aren't any fun either. They hit really hard. They're not real bright though for having four heads. And the other thing that they could do is they could get me stuck with a card that I can't refine unless I get a whole bunch of others. Just like it. Another place that you can run into Malboros pretty easily is um, on the plains of Vassar. Should you choose to go that route, you're also going to run into behemoths and other things that are there. Just all sorts of nasty. 
And I don't, I really don't like the fact that the last two meteor strikes have both done 10,000 damage. It's not a good sign. So we're just gonna keep trying to kill it. So there is a nice thing about that monsters on the island close to heaven and the island close to hell is that because they're so darn powerful, they give you a crap ton of experience. Which will make up for all the experience we didn't gain running around on Cacto Island. Which got edited down to nothing for all of you. Um, what's good about that is that I can get all my characters level 100 real easy. Just max out that that area too, see what I mean? Is no matter what, every character requires 1,000 experience points to level up. And the experience you gain kind of scales with the level of the monster. So everybody levels up. It's like being on an episode of Oprah. You get a level. You get a level. You get a level. You get a level. You learn an ability. It's all fun and games until you run into a Malboro, though. I just have nightmares. I got a little PTSD when it comes to those guys. And we can also do a lap around the outside. Okay, Ochus are no joke either. Luckily, though, they don't... They're not as evil to deal with. They just inflict you with the more annoying statuses like curse and slow. Curse meaning you don't get any limit breaks, slow, pretty obvious. But Squall's got auto haste, so Squall doesn't care. Get a nice bit of experience, get a card. And everybody gains a level. Alright, so here... Oh, maybe I get lucky here. So that's the best way to fight Malboros. <laughs> Is to have Odin do it for you. Look at all that experience. Oh, I got curse spikes instead. Oh, that hurts. Oh, that, that sucks. That's the low level drop. I don't think these things, I don't think they drop anything terribly useful. So I'm just going to ignore chimeras. Let's beat this Ocho down because it's nice and easy to do. I do love the design on the on the plant creatures in these games. Just in the history of the Final Fantasy games, they do a really, really good job with with the monster with the monster plants. Arboros and Ochos, King Ocho and uh, or Lord Ocho in Final Fantasy X. For instance, like the first major boss that was really, really problematic uh, when you get the island of Kilika, which, as much as I love that game, like if I, I would only do it on PC with a mod that muted Yuna and Titus the entire time. That's the only. That's the only way I could put up with it. Is I've like I've played that game three or four times at least. And it's like that's that's my big hang up every single time with Final Fantasy X. So Triface, we know all about Trifaces. Now the thing to check is they might have Meteor. Nope. We're just gonna beat them down.
That was nice of that Triface to murder Zell before, uh, before kicking out. Nope. Oh, one thing I just reminded myself of, Cactar. So Cactar as a level is actually the only thing that's important about Cactar. If you choose to use Cactar as an attacking summon, it's going to do damage based off of its level. So for instance, this Cactar is level 23. When it uses the tech, it's going to do 2000 damage. So it takes that first number of the level, or I should say the first two digits of the level. Imagine that the hundreds place is filled with a zero in this particular instance. So it's going to do 2000 damage. That's not a whole lot. So when you max it out, it'll do 9,999 because that's the damage limit within the game. Or is it? It no, it basically is. So that was just something that just just came to mind just now. Felt like I should share that. Oh, everybody else has learned all their abilities. Good for them. Bring Zell back to life. Do I only have one rare item ability? Yep, okay. Oh, that is what it is. I don't really feel like dealing with that. I'd have to look up their drops. Tornado. I know they're that that's drops not the the words. The triface's drop is not worth it for me. Because I've already maxed out on all the spells that it's going to give me. And this is just easy experience, so I'll just take it. It doesn't hit hard enough to scare me. Don't worry, not drinking, drinking. It's Boylan's root beer. Slight departure from my usual Virgils, but different times call for different measures, and quite frankly, it's fantastic root beer. Very minor differences to me between the Virgils and the Boylan's. Both come in a nice glass dark bottle, therefore you're not getting any taint from sun damage. I can get into root beer. Here we go, Marlboro. Actually got a fight at this time. Got two tentacles, and we get out. There is nothing to be gained by dealing with him because it could just be game over. It's just that quick and easy. So we got two tentacles. I believe we need... I believe we need a grand total of ten. Which is really unfortunate. This thing hasn't even acted yet. Holy crap. Man, I know my characters are fast. I don't think that Ocho attacked. I should say Ochu, but... Alright, Odin. We just need that rare drop. Four tentacles. Tentacles, 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 tentacles. Oh, nice! That's awesome. Alright, so... Doom Train now becomes our primary focus. So, we went to Etsar. When we originally went to Etsar, we obtained this, ring, this item, the Solomon Ring. Okay, so, <laughs> I guess I didn't realize the um, stock of items I had. So, when you go to get Doom Train, you need four items in combination. You need a Salmon Ring, which we had, six Malboro Tentacles, which we've just obtained, six Steel Pipes, which I didn't realize that I had, and then you also need six Remedy Pluses, which 
you get from Alexander, the Guardian Force, learning med data and then learning med level up. You turn 10 remedies into remedy plus. Put all that together, boom, Doom Train. What does Doom Train do for us? It's a good question. It's been a couple minutes. Let's take a peek. So, Doom Train is a summon. Ooh, and there's some nice stuff. Ooh, 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 nice stuff, nice stuff. Okay, so Doom Train as a summon is a poison elemental attack. Um, in addition, I believe it also inflicts poison. It learns nice, nice abilities. Status Junction 4, Elemental Junction 4, Auto Shell is nice for the later game. Uh, junk Shop, so you can call the Weapon Shop right from the menu screen as opposed to having to go to town. Forbidden Medicine is what I'm going to have it learn first. Um, because there's things I need it to do in order to refine into abilities that are going to come into play even later in the game. And for the time being, I'm going to give it to Squall. Yeah. Alright, so Doom Train is now gone. We've now obtained all side guardian forces that are legitimate guardian forces, including Odin. The one that we haven't gotten is Phoenix. Phoenix you get from doing the Shumi tribe, Shumi village side quest, which uh, we can do that. What I'm going to end up doing is flying over to the Shumi village. After one more lap around the island to make sure that I'm stocked up on good magic, or just to just to build the build the reserves of the of the uber powerful magic. And might as well gain a couple levels too while we're at it, right? So we're gonna hit with the dance. Not a big deal. It just slows me down a little bit. I don't know why I had six steel pipes in my inventory still. Or I should say at least six steel pipes in my inventory still. Like I remembered they needed remedy pluses and I remembered how to go f how to get to that point, but I couldn't recall the other item and then just boom. But it's it's steel pipes. And here's where the problem comes in with bad breath. I figured I'd show it one time. It's just bad news. But I got what I needed out of it. So one thing I'm going to do real quick. I'm going to see if I can get any better weaponry for my people. Fury Fragment. Oh, where do you get Fury Fragments from? You get them from Blue Dragons. Blue Dragons are on the island close to hell. Dragon Fangs, you get them from Hexadragons. Pulse Ammo, you refine energy crystals into Pulse Ammo. Dino Bones are pretty easy. T-Rex R's. Moonstones, I think you only get them from... Iron Giants and Red Giants. Sharp Spikes, get them from Gram Mantises, which we can get pretty easy. Energy Crystals, those things suck to get. So looks like we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Need seven, eight energy crystals, and I don't remember how to get those. All right, new plan. I'm gonna go to the island closest to hell. T Rex stars are on the island. Uh, Hexa dragons are on the island, and uh, blue dragons are on the island as well. And all of those things contribute a little more use to my ultimate weapon. Ultimate weapon 
mission. Because that's what I'm up to. I'm, I'm going to get ultimate weapons. And we don't need to deal with that crazy thing. Spell? Holy? And we're leaving. And don't really need to deal with that. Alright, so the island closes to hell. Or not. Might as well get those Malboro tentacles. I don't know what else they can turn into. I'm in a realm in the game where the the methods in which I'm doing things is still foreign to me because I haven't simply done it this way before. With the refine and refine and refine and refine and refine. What new magic spell could that be? I never bothered to stock a break ever? Okay. Ooh, that was a Fury Fragment. And we're getting out of here. One down. Got Zell's ultimate weapon. Oh, I'm only at the cutting trigger. Never once forged the punishment. And there's quite frankly no reason to do. So, Grendels. Grendels are good for dragon skin, but I don't think they're good for much else. Oh, they only give me dragon fins. No reason to fight them. Alright, this is going to be a tough one. For a multitude of reasons. Alright, so I have rejunctioned all my magic and forgot to take off my elemental junctions, which is a no-no when you're going into a place that has a lot of enemies that do not care. Or that do care what your elemental junction is. There we go. I'm gonna have to hit the Cacti Island again just to get some abilities learned. Not dealing with the Grendels. Big boy. Got my dino bones. See if I can't poison it. I can go a little quicker. Oh, it hits it with every status. Stop included. I do not mind that, Sam. I am. Alright. Shiva's still the best way to smash this thing. Unless you're just gonna go and blow all your magic. Which I'm not a huge fan of doing until you're in a boss fight. Using your actual magic spells. Unless you pin yourself in a corner and you have to do it. 
Well, if it stopped, I'm just gonna beat it down because I'm gonna move faster that way. I think it's got a Doom counter and a Petrification counter on it, too. It's Berserked, it's Poisoned, it's Silenced, it's Blinded. I should try Doom tearing out a little more often, eh? Oh, I forgot that guy was there, too. They're not- they're more common on the island close to the heaven. So that's where I identify them being from. Okay, that didn't work out right. Um, item... Phoenix down... Go. Cottage. Yeah. All right. Moonstone. Already done there. There's no point in even doing that. Sharp spikes. Alright, so I think... I think here's my red fangs. Things hit so hard. That that thing's called the dragon, even though it has no wings. It's still a pretty cool design for a creature. Six legs, six eyes. Just huge muscular tail. Like, disproportionate. There we go. Dropped it. All that experience. thing we gotta deal with before getting the heck out of here. Because Shumi Village in and of itself is the better portion of a video. There's a lot going on in Shumi Village. So, why don't we fly there and at least get the ball rolling there. Oh. Uh, this little island here, long skinny guy, Longhorn Island they call it, that is where you're going to find Adamantois, which is your best source for Adamantine. Alright, so that's the Shumi Village. 
Snow Lion. North Wind. Healing Mail. Okay. I can never remember everything that these these monsters you can drop or you can mug from them. I think the card refines into a North Wind. Doesn't want to go down either. Good grief. Just go down. There we go. Huh. Alright, at least they give me like 500 experience for that. Couple guardian forces learn some abilities. That's a good one. Yeah, you might as well just learn that. You're doing that. Alright, Shumi Village. First thing to note, that draw point. Ultima. Woo! Thirteen Ultimas. So Ultima, when you junction it to your elemental defense, it goes heavily into fire... Um, f fire, ice, and lightning. The green star means that you absorb. So I reduce the other five elements by 41%, but in this particular instance, I absorb 21% of damage that's supposed to be dealt to me so I get healed by it. So, we'll descend into Shumi Village. If you'll recall, a couple of videos ago when we were dealing with the infighting um, at the Garden, Master Norg was referred to as the Black Sheep of the Shumi Tribe by Headmaster Sid. We're going to meet them. Let's get this one. There we go. So they play with random and plus, which is fine. Nice. Um. That's useful because that'll turn into a sharp spike. So Shumi Village, the the quest is basically to just obtain the Phoenix Pinion, which sorry, I had to adjust my slippers. The Phoenix Pinion, which will allow you when you use it as an item in battle to summon Phoenix. The benefit of doing so is that if your party gets wiped out, you have a chance. A phoenix coming to revive you as well as dealing fire damage so it can be incredibly useful just to have and it's like one of those things might as well right it's a moomba got a frog over there timber maniacs Okay, so here's the most important. 
the Shumi tribe revere Laguna. Talk to the elder now and learn a little bit more about Shumi culture. The elder is in this building. If I can get there. There we go. Seventeen years ago. Hmm. The average age of our party members is seventeen. <laughs> Laguna is a terrible communicator, to be sure, to be sure. up a play and I don't know what that play is so let's try to see if I got something to deal with it before they can deal with it I don't have the right cards for it so I'm gonna do that yeah I had a feeling that was coming hmm well that sucks Ugh. And sometimes you get put into a spot like that and you just, you're not sure, you're not sure which way to, to throw your block. And I, I think sometimes that it doesn't matter because I think that they got stuff to work either angle. Alright, here we are again in that same spot. Another way to do it. At least I was able to force a tie. I need to get my Bahamut card back. Ooh. Ooh! It's a rough way to have to go about doing that. Cards to don't have the right cards. This is bad. Lose all my good cards to attendant. Character so useless they didn't bother to give him a real name. If that seven and three were reversed, I could do something with that. But they are not. Can't even take the blob, bro. Oh, here we go. Whew. Oh, 
your garbage hand. Alright, I'm just not going to play cards anymore. Alright, so at some point in time, I'm going to have to go back here to retrieve my cards. That's all there is to that. Wait, hold on. <laughs> I knew it was something silly like that. Hey, right, windstones. I believe the windstone is... I thought it was over there. Okay, so it's in that little crevice there. I just wish we could just go out and collect them all. Lifestones. It's there underneath the tree roots. Stones. Um, they're upstairs. I often found where shadows overlap, which is upstairs behind one of the pillars, I want to say. Sorry about that. Shadows overlap. Done. And then Waterstone is in that pond, but we can't go get that until we talk to Sculptor. Nope, that's the Elder's house. Okay, would have sworn that was it. Waterstone's in a sink. Waterstone's in a sink, it's in this guy's sink. Yay! Wrap that up pretty lickety split. One minor hiccup.
That's the real. <laughs> the Shumis have a sense of humor. And off we go. So, I'm just gonna end up leaving the village. Hopefully the draw point's active again. Called a video after I leave the village. I'm going to end up doing some farming off screen or not recorded on a video um, just to kind of smooth things along. Um, so, next time, my goal will be to ultimate weapon out the party, whatever that means. Start from the top and work my way down. Squall, for instance, I need to find Dragon Fangs. I don't remember where you get those. I had to look that up. Pulse Ammo. I'm 99% sure you find them from Energy Crystals. Where do you get Energy Crystals? I don't know. Cell, already done. Irvine, Moonstone. I think I know where you get them, but again, just double check. Sharp Spikes, pretty easy to find. Energy Crystals, problematic. Regan Ring and Windmills. Windmills? I gotta remember where to get windmills. And then you find one more star fragment for selfie. So that's my objective next time is to max out my weaponry. Um, and in doing so, that probably means we're going back to the deep sea research station. And Omega Weapon awaits. Which is always a very exciting, interesting battle. Because it is, quite frankly, no, it's not Omega Weapon, it's Ultimate Weapon. Ultimate weapons in the deep sea, or deep sea research facility and Omega weapon is in Ultimatius Castle, which we will get to in just a couple of videos because I kind of skipped a couple steps um, by accident just by already being prepared. So anyway, until next time, take it easy and have fun out there. Stay safe.